Hey guys, what's going on? We are here at the Louisville Boat and RV Show. We're checking out some of these RVs. Right now we're taking a look at the work and play uh, by Forest River back here. Uh, we got uh, my man Aaron here who's going to show us around, tell us all about it. Uh, give us an inside scoop on this thing. They've also got a unit coming out. You could use a half ton truck. This is like a three quarter ton truck model. Uh, so that's really important when we're towing things. We want to know what we're getting into. So Aaron's going to give us all the details about this here unit. What we have here is our uh, 29 WKS work and play toy hauler. We're about 35 feet, six inches long. 9,600 pounds in uh, empty weight. You can put about 4,100 pounds of cargo inside of it. Okay. Our garage is going to be about 15,9, and we also have a slide to give you some additional living space. So, uh, you want to go check out the inside? Yeah, let's check it out. So, you got this uh, the garage all set up, and it looks like you can move stuff to get that extra length in here? Right. So, from our counter space up there all the way to the back, we're about 15,9. Okay. And if you had a, a four-seater Razor or a four-seater Maverick, yeah. you'd move the two chairs and the table up towards the front. Okay. And then once our slide comes in, we have about 72 inches of width. Oh, okay. So, so those those bigger ones that are 74 are not going to fit. Okay. But the right. average ones, as you know, are usually 64 or 68 inches. Yep, yep, so, yep. About 64 or uh, 68 yeah. So then this would just come up, this sofa here? This. Yeah, that will flip up out of the way. Uh -huh. And if you just had a two-seater unit with the slide in, you got about 11 feet of garage. All right. Back there. Okay. So and then uh, what's the height on this once it's up? Once the uh, t the uh, bed as well as the couches are up, you're about 82 inches. Okay. So you can even have a little bit of a lift on your unit and still be able to get it in and out. So what we have up here is a full queen size bed with the real mattress. These will flip over both sides. Um, so if you had somebody tall, we're over 92 inches width here, and about um, or length, and about um, 60 inches in our width. Our front bed is a full king size bed, and then that small couch will also jackknife down. So if you got a little little kid or something like that, they could go in there too. Nice. Um, so I mean, you can really just stack people in here. Yeah. How about your D rings as far as securing your machine to the floor? So we are rated at 2,500 pounds. Uh -huh. We've done a pull test that didn't fail till about 3,200 pounds, and it was actually the D ring itself that yeah. failed. Um, they're bolted into the frame, so okay. we actually have metal strips that come across. All right. Everywhere we have a D-ring to give you extra security to hold your, your toys and your units in place. Nice. And then as far as like your AC, how many units do you have that control the whole unit? So we're dual uh, 15,000 BTU air conditioners, uh -huh. and they're on separate thermostats, so you could have one temperature up in the front in your bedroom and a separate temperature back here. Oh, okay. We also have a 5,500 watt Onan generator, so yeah. this is a 50 amp unit and it'll run both air conditioners. All right, so if you were just out boondocking, how about like your water, your gray, your black? Okay. All that as far Water's as Water's 100 gallons. Yeah. Gray is 84. Black is 39. Okay. We also have a 30 gallon onboard fuel cell. Yeah. And that's going to not only power our generator, but also give you some extra gas for your toys and stuff like that. Cool. How about like your hot water heater? What size is that now? Is it? Six gallon DSI. So it's going to be an auto ignite. Yeah. That's going to be gas and electric. Um, gas is more efficient yeah. than electric, but if you're plugged in at a campground, use their power instead yep. of your propane. Yeah. Or if you need a quick recycle because most people need to yeah. shower, you can actually run both and that'll give you about 18 gallons of hot water an hour. How about as far as, uh, you know, a lot of people are concerned about weight these days with the truck, with the load, yeah. um, do they need a CDL? There's a lot of questions out there now because certain like different states have different regulations right so people are confused so if someone were to get something like this what would they need to tow it this one is definitely designed for a three-quarter ton um, we're at 9600 pounds empty 1100 pounds of tongue weight and our cargo carry capacity is 4100 pounds so this is really built to hold a lot so we have five brand new lines coming out that are uh, really catering to the half ton market. Uh -huh. um, those just started production. We've only produced about 30 of them. You're going to start seeing them coming out to your dealerships. And you'll know the new ones because they're a gray skin with a black skirting and they just look super slick. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. real modern you know, yeah. good looking trailer. So how did you get from a three quarter to a half ton? What did you have to do to make that? Is it the same size or is it less weight? We completely redesigned them from yeah. scratch. Um, because as you know, the half ton market is what's growing incredibly fast as far as truck sales, RVs, everything. 
So we needed to focus more on that half ton market than we had yeah. in the past. Mm -hmm. So we completely redid everything. Yep. Um, this trailer here, here has an optional auto level on it. So because of that, it's a little overbuilt. Yeah. We have a 10 inch I-beam frame because that auto level will actually lift this off the ground if it has to. Oh, okay. And yeah. if you're on something like an eight inch frame or something like that, you could start breaking welds and yeah. things like yeah. that from the torque and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, now, what does uh, something like this retail for? Um, I guess you have like a base price and then you have options, of course, but like just a base MSRP. So MSRP is always going to be kind of misleading because yeah. that's what we recommend that they sell it for. Nobody sells it. Yeah, for uh, yeah, yeah. So this unit right here, which is, I mean, it is loaded. It doesn't have the auto level and it doesn't have the patio kit, but the generator and everything else. At this show, this is 42 Oh, okay. Now, yeah. I would expect it not at a show price to see somewhere... 43 44 45 somewhere in there yeah. so they've i mean this one they've really cut that price to give people a, a good opportunity at this one yeah and then uh how about like uh if you're camping and it gets cold uh are the ac units like a heat pump that only goes down to like say 40 degrees and then you have to use your gas no. for heat or house so we, we have no heat in the ceiling oh okay all of our heat is through our furnace all right and it is also ducted into our heated and enclosed underbelly Okay. Um, and, and is that gas or? Yeah, that's okay. propane. Propane. Yeah. So um, typically, you know, on a on an average camper, your uh, your under underbelly is going to be within about ten degrees of what it is up here. Yeah. Um, this is not a four season rated camper. Yeah, yeah. But uh, can you get below freezing? Can you do some extended camping? Absolutely. Yeah. What type of warranties on something like this if they bought it brand new? So it's a one year bumper to hitch warranty. You're going to have some additional warranties from um, you know the cooktop, microwave. The roof has a 12-year warranty. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people kind of, oh, it's only a one year, you know, because the car industry's kind of spoiled people on that a little bit. But if you're using this and yeah. there's an issue, it's going to show up real yeah. fast. Yeah. You know? How about uh, one other question I had, and this seems to happen a lot in the camping world, and actually we worked with Progressive for quite a while, and they said one of the largest claims was the tires blowing apart and destroying the side of the campers. Right. Do you have a certain tire that comes with it, and then do you have an upgrade option, or does it come with like a higher rated tire? So, yeah, we do have a higher rated tire, and um, I came from the retail industry, and I've heard the China bombs. Yeah, China stuff. bombs, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and here's the thing is, is the whole industry as a whole, there's one manufacturer, Jayco uses exclusively Goodyear Endurance on everything. Yeah. Um, everybody else does not because yeah. of cost. Um, everybody puts a pretty good tire on there, but your biggest problem is people who are, are not are not inflating them properly. Yep. So it's been yep. in storage for six months. Mm -hmm. Memorial Day weekend's coming out. Let's throw all the toys in there. Meanwhile, our tires are like 35 PSI, and we're going down the highway at 70 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're going to have a catastrophic failure, and then it's the tire's fault. Yep. Yep. The biggest issue I see with campers is just a lack of maintenance. Yeah. There's not a whole lot you have to do, but maintain your tire pressure and check your seals twice a year on the roof. Yeah. That's it. Ten yep. minutes of your time. It's simple and easy, but people just don't do it. Is this kind of what you have right here, the space as far as your cabinets, or do you have any kind of, uh, other than the front, like under storage? Or... So we're going to have a lot of cabinetry in here. Um, one of the things that we do um, is we have actual pocket screwed cabinets uh -huh. back here. Uh -huh. um, this is a lumber core wood and a hardwood cabinet door. Uh -huh. So this is built to take some abuse. It's yeah. all wrapped, so we have a consistent color. But we have tons of storage, and even in places like this, in the kitchen area, We've even put shelves because no, we know you're going to have your cookware and stuff like that here. Yeah. Where this particular cabinet right here is going to be for your food storage and stuff like that. So we didn't put a shelf in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you have cereal boxes or tall things, you have the room. Yeah. So we've tried to be really smart about our storage in here. Um, and, and, and to be honest with you, uh, you know, a toy hauler, there's certain parts that are going to appeal to a man. How much can I put in here? Yeah. What does it look like? More like the outside. And it's going to be, you know, your wife who's going to want the inside to yeah. cater to her. Yeah. And it was kind of a hard lesson to learn, but we finally learned that we have to make the inside more desirable yeah. to, to the whole family, not just to one half or the other. Half. Yeah. And I've seen some where they put in the big windows, but they take out all the storage. Well, you know, the view is nice, but if you don't have the storage, it kind of defeats the purpose. So right. with this, you've got still got your windows. You can see out both sides really good, and you still got your storage. So that's pretty cool. And our windows are tinted as well, yeah, so, so that's going to give you a little bit of privacy. It's also going to help keep it a little cooler by yeah. not allowing the, wind, the the sun to just beat in as yeah. opposed to an untinted window. Yeah. 
And uh, so you have one bathroom in this one, uh, and then the shower looks like it's pretty good size. Yeah, so I've actually put a guy in there who was 6'8". Yeah. Because um, that's always a big thing in campers is you don't fit in the shower. Yep. And just to talk about some of the engineering and the things that we've thought about. So this has a slide. When the slide comes in, it's going to lock your door into your bedroom. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is we've made a second door in here so you have full access to the coach through the bathroom when your slide is in. Okay. Also, we put our eight cubic foot two-way fridge here yeah. so when the slide's in, you still have access to your fridge. Okay. Instead of burying it in that corner when the slide's in and you can't get it. Oh, yeah. We've so we're trying to that. think yeah. on how to make this usable all the time. So if you're going down to Florida and you're overnighting at a Walmart or a Bass Pro Shop or something like that, yeah. you can still use everything. Another thing that we use is this product called Asdel. Uh -huh. This is made from recycled soda pop bottles. Oh wow. So this is on the back side of our fiberglass. Uh -huh. It's impervious to water, so if you ever have a leak from a window or a roof or something like that, you will not get a delamination with oh, Asdel. Okay. It also is a sound detonator, so it actually absorbs some sound, mm -hmm. and it increases your R value. So it's going to help with your insulative quality a little bit. It costs a little bit more than yeah. Luan, but in the end, it's going to you know give you more life out of your camera. Yeah, um, and you'll any, any there are a lot of manufacturers who are using it, and you'll see the Asdel sticker right by your entryway, yep. and that's how you know you have Asdel in your camper. Okay, so it just does a much better job for about what the same weight, or is it? It's lighter? a lighter weight, I was say, it seems but it's lighter. a higher cost. Yeah. So a lot of manufacturers have stayed with Luon just because of the price point. Yeah. If you have Luon and water gets in there, it'll separate immediately mm -hmm. because it's a wood-based product and it absorbs the water and. and the glue will degrade and you'll see it a mile it's away. It's almost like a press board. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Once it gets wet, it's done. It's done. Yeah. And yeah. as soon as you go to trade it in and you know that dealership's walking around, they're gonna go deal in there, deal in yeah. there, and it's minus, 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 yeah. minus. So it really hurts your value. So if you need to put a bigger unit in here, you can just slide these up here. That gives you your garage space yep. all the way up to here. Yep. So for you guys, you can put a four-wheeler up here yeah. and a side-by-side -side back there. Yep. So ATV side-by-side, -side, this would be a great option. Yeah. Two side-by-sides, your problem is you're just so big and that's such a small part of the market. Yeah. We might sell five of those a year. Yeah. So our cost would just be 75 grand a unit, yeah. you know, and then people aren't going to pay that kind of money. Yeah, yeah. So you have to, you know, when you're in the manufacturer, you have to look at how are we going to sell a lot. Right? Yeah, it's a business. Yep, yep. We need to cater to as many people as possible. We need to cater the masses. And there's going to be that small niche that wants something, you know, and you're either going to have to spend a lot of money on a big fifth wheel that's designed for that, yeah. or you're going to have to, you know, get a cargo trailer and kind of do your own build out. So we have, this is a, a thermofoil solid surface countertop. Um, so we're not going to have any water delaminations like the old T-Mold where it would get wet. Mm -hmm. We have a dual stainless steel basin sink with the residential style sprayer so when you get out of line she can <laughs> cool you off a little Spray bit. Spray me down. Yeah. Um, so the, the whole purpose in all this is to become more and more residential mm -hmm. and less and less campery. Yep. So remember those old campers that had just the little metal yeah. foot tops? So you know I mean we're getting a lot more significant in this um, just because longevity, e ease of use, everything we, you know you want people to have you know, build value into this and, and stuff that's going to look more significant and more like their house and less like a camper. And yep. That's why the nicer uh, wood, the nicer cabinets, cooktop, big pantry spaces. Because let's face it, if you got a couple of teenage kids, it oh, doesn't yeah. matter how much food you bring, they're going to eat it all. Yep, that's true. Uh -huh. That's so, true. Let me show that. And you got the accent underlighting. Yep, oh, so I you've like got the too. accent underlighting here. Behind the sign, uh, above that cabinet, behind you, uh -huh. and then also above this slide over here. Nice. So at night you can kind of turn off the interior lights. It looks kind of cool. Yeah. Very cool. And then we can come through this door right here into our master bedroom. This is a true king size bed. It's not a California king. It is a real king. Okay. Uh, wardrobe storage on both sides. And then you're going to see, like, we have these little pockets here that mm -hmm. you can put a small uh, RV-style uh, CPAP machine or your phones or whatever else you need. USB chargers as well as 110 standard plugs. The USBs are always going to have power if you have a battery on the front. Okay. So, again, if you're overnighting somewhere and you want to plug in your phones, you're always going to have power right okay. there. All right. 
So, so is there a switch for these lights back yeah, here? Yeah, these lights are right here. Okay, all right. So they're individually controlled. Yep. Because I hate when you get in bed and it's like, oh man, the switch is all the way over there. Then you got to get back out, yeah, turn it off. Sit up. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. Off and on. And then we'll have our second entrance into our bathroom right there. Uh, yeah. So you don't have to go out. You can just go straight through here. You even got some steps where people like to have their little dogs come along yeah, and jump yeah, up so on the bed. Yeah, so the dogs can jump up there a little Scrappy, bit easier. Scrappy yeah. can come along. Yeah, we're dog friendly. Yeah. And you'll notice so that's that we straight, have all straight through stores. Yep. Yeah. This is a gas, oil, and uh, water resistant floor. So if you were to have a leak, uh, wipe it right up. It's not gonna hurt it at all. Um, in my toy hauler, I have a battery powered uh, leak blower. So whenever I take my stuff out, I just blow everything out. It's it much better than sweeping because it gets everything out of your D-rings and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. And it'll blow mud and everything right out of the back. Work and Play's been around for a long time. We just completely redid it. Forever we were a cargo trailer that was converted into yeah. a toy hauler. Yep. basically um, and, and they were built fantastic the problem is the price point was a lot higher so that trailer comparable to this might be eight thousand dollars more yeah so from a consumer's aspect they're like well you know price in this how, how am I gonna spend eight thousand dollars more for your unit yeah. well in eight years let's look at two of them and you tell me yeah if that eight thousand dollars was worth it problem is the consumer can't see the value at that time yeah so we had to go away from that more to a traditional style so we could be more competitive in the price market